since the last devlog, I've been adding a ton of content, including a shop, new guns, new player and weapon passives, a couple of new spooky enemy types, and much more. I've also started work on the next arena in the game. Stick around to the end of the video for a sneak peek. This is devlog number nine for Gun Game. If you're new here, allow me to tell you about this game. Gun Game is a fantasy roguelite shooter with a focus on creating powerful and unique builds every run. In Gun Game, you craft your guns out of distinct parts and collect game-changing passive abilities in order to create the perfect monster-slaying hero. The name Gun Game is not final, so don't worry. I'm actively thinking of a proper title. In the last devlog, I showed you how I overhauled the game and made it much more fun. These past number of weeks have been spent adding content and features to further support this new vision. As a refresher, the new gameplay loop works like this. You get dropped into this arena where you have to fight waves of enemies. Enemies will spawn as long as the wave timer is running. After each wave, you are presented with three passive abilities and can choose one. The passive ability you choose lasts for the duration of the run. Immediately afterward, you are presented with a new gun part, which can be added to either your right or left gun. These weapon parts can have have a variety of stats, but the most important stats are what I call weapon affixes. These affixes act like passive abilities that are attached to the gun part itself. Affixes can change the bullet behavior, add status effects like poison or bleed, and more. This game loop is pretty fun. However, there was a major problem with the game. The enemies can drop gold, but there was no way to spend gold. Behold, a mysterious elevator. I wonder where it goes. After a brief trip up a rickety elevator, you are placed into the shop where you can meet with the Shady Gecko shopkeeper. Interacting with the Shady Gecko presents you with a number of options. By default, the shop is stocked with weapon parts that are each guaranteed to have two affixes. The price on each part is randomized, meaning that it's possible to get a really powerful part for pretty cheap. Additionally, the shop sells a number of health globes which restore your health. Once you're done shopping, it's just a short elevator ride back into the arena where the fighting continues. There's a lot to be done here still, and I envision expanding the shop to sell full gun sets and other one-off consumables. Perhaps the shopkeeper will also sell player passive abilities, but for a much higher price. I also plan to do a lot of work on the environment art for the shop, but also for the game more generally. Let's talk for a moment about how the shop is made accessible to the player. My plan is to allow random events to occur in between waves. So after the player chooses the weapon reward, there's a chance for a random event to be generated. Here, I have a loot table which contains the events. If an event is chosen, it will be spawned into the arena. Currently, it only contains the shop, but I have many more events planned, including weapon upgrades via an upgrade bench, casino style games, for example, a slot machine to spend gold in exchange for a random upgrade, sacrificing player health for permanent buffs, and many more to be decided. The flexibility of this random event system means I can basically add anything I want. There's a lot of potential here and I'm excited to further develop this system. If you have an idea for a random encounter, leave it in the comments below. Purchasing gun parts would be no good without subjects to test them on, so I made two new enemies since the last devlog. This is the maggot. The maggot is disgusting. The maggot is special in that it does not shoot a projectile. Instead, the maggot rears its ugly head and launches itself across the arena. This long-range dash attack is great for breaking up player movement and adding a little bit of chaos to the game. The other enemy is the spider centaur. Half spider, half man, half bug. This guy runs quickly, keeping distance from the player. It shoots a special bullet pattern, which is harder to dodge and adds attack type variety to the game. In order for this enemy to shoot a special bullet pattern, I had to implement a system for defining the patterns. I'm pretty happy with how clever and easy to use this system is. All I have to do is add this bullet pattern component and then add any number of path 2D nodes. These nodes allow me to visualize the pattern. Then I set the number of bullets to be distributed across the multiple paths and that's it. The code I wrote calculates the total length of the paths together and then places a bullet at the proper interval based on how many bullets total should be created. Needless to say, this bullet pattern implementation opens up a lot of possibilities for future enemy types. I'm especially looking forward to applying 
this for bosses. The final really big set of features I worked on were for the UI. If you watched the last mini devlog I published, then you already saw some of this. The passive selection screens and gun part reward screens now consist of cards that are animated. I think this makes interaction with the UI a lot more pleasant as well as intuitive. I especially like the animation for re-rolling the gun parts. There were a lot of changes since the last devlog, and I can't possibly mention them all, but here are some other notable changes. I added a bone gun, which shoots bones. I added a sniper gun and an affix to go along with it that allows bullets to pierce through enemies. I added several custom cursors, including a crosshair, standard cursor, and pointer. I added a stat overview screen that can be seen at any time. It allows the player to see their current gun configurations and collected passives. I added a bleed status, which causes enemies to take increased damage based on the number of bleed stacks. I added a bullet affix that causes bullets to bend toward the nearest enemy. It might need to be tweaked a bit though. I added a phantom gun passive called Imaginary Friend, which replicates your lowest damage gun and it automatically shoots at the closest enemy. I added a passive called Be The Fuse, which causes the player to explode when a magazine becomes empty, dealing damage to enemies within a certain radius. Now that I have covered the new content, I would like to talk about the game's story and world building. I have been busy creating all of this content, but I feel like I needed at least a light story to tie it all together and to explain some of the mechanics. So here's what I have come up with. The game is set in a fantasy world where the player's hero is part of an elite group of monster slayers. The monster slaying heroes are tasked with going into the monster's dens and eradicating them in order to bring security to the land. The game's universe is magical and fantastical. Therefore, heroes can be teleported from den to den with magic and can be resurrected after death to get back into the fight. The inability of your hero to truly die means that your hero will be able to gain permanent upgrades after each run and bring those upgrades into all future excursions into monster dens. That's how I'm going to explain the roguelite meta progression elements of the game. The world building also explains the main game's progression, teleporting from arena to arena. The player will start in the dungeon den and then work their way sequentially through increasingly difficult dens until ultimately fighting the final boss. What do you think about this game world? Let me know in the comments below. And finally, as promised, here's a quick look at the next arena, the Graveyard Den. Please note that this is very work in progress and will likely change dramatically over the course of development. That's it for this devlog. See you all in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. Please consider liking and subscribing. Check out the links in the description to sign up for my email list at firebelly.com to learn how to build a 2D platformer in the Godot engine and to support my work by purchasing one of my games on Steam or itch.io. All those links are in the description.